visiting here near the Hackatree River in mid-March on the first day of fall here on the South Island of New Zealand. Known as one of the most sought after fly fishing destinations for browns, rainbows, and salmon, New Zealand attracts anglers from around the globe who dream of the ultimate fly fishing experience. For fly fishermen, an outfitter like Tony Pierce is the dream weaver that can make or break this trip of a lifetime. I'm self-employed and I work, my company's name is Huntfish New Zealand Limited. The philosophy in the business is memories and uh, we guide people to have a great time. This area here is the high country. The uniqueness about it is, it is it's a huge challenge for people when they want to come out. If they want a challenge, they've got to come here. The area itself is is, is wild, it's uh, unforgiving, it's just um, an area that is something new every day. Since New Zealand's summer and fall take place during America's winter and spring, anglers can find warm weather and large trout here through March if they're willing to make the long 20-hour journey. It's so peaceful. It's in a scenic area, it's a very scenery valley, scenic valley. You couldn't walk anymore. It's as close to heaven as you could possibly get. Tony's guiding service offers clients beautiful accommodations and access to several types of water, including braided streams and high mountain lakes. Anglers here can choose between various types of fishing, from sight casting for cruisers to dead drifting nymphs and dry flies in fast moving streams and rivers. Uh, there's nine, nine lakes around the place, so it's really beautiful. High country's unique. It's like scenery that you just wouldn't get anywhere else. The two most famous fishing rivers in the South Island are right near the homestead. So, I think um, location-wise, it's perfect. Tony's passion for this area and the start of his guiding service are the result of the strong bond Tony has formed with this area from an early age. Growing up in poverty, Tony and his family depended on hunting and fishing in this very wilderness just to get by. Everything naturally was our playground. It was just beautiful. And that is what I remember about this place, and it hasn't changed. Not a, not a bit. Except now you, now you have a house and a fireplace instead of a tent. I know, and we have electricity. <laughs> and we have electricity because we didn't have electricity. We had a kerosene tilly lamp on the kitchen table. And that tilly lamp was our only light. We had a lot of family time. There was games, there was no TV and no radio. It was just great times. I love to fish for the simple reasons. There's so much relaxation and so much pleasure of being able to outwit some of these wily trout that we've got here. I mean, they're a challenge. And, and as you will have seen in the last couple of days, they're not easy. The brown, he'll go straight to the bottom, into the weed. He gets quite different. So again, try and control him a little bit. He's a nice little fish. The feeding habits, I mean, they're, 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 they're similar, but the, the rainbow, he'll feed in underneath into the snails, into the into the weed, like the brown usually comes up and porpoises and gets loose, that other stuff. But to be able to bait them, that's good. And then put them back, even better. Oh my goodness, he's six pound. For who? He's a six pound trout. Good size. He is well hooked. There he goes. He'll need to rest a bit. He's had a fair fight, I can tell you. Live to fight another day.